The weather people say that this is the worst snowstorm we've had in Colorado in the last three years. So of course we decided to come up here at Tumbleweed Ranch and do a little bit of snow wheeling. And Tommy said he wants to take out a classic car and actually see how it does in the snow. So I don't know what's behind that door, but I'm gonna go pop open the door and we'll see what Tommy wants to wheel today in like two and a half feet of snow. <laughs> All right, he's decided he wants to go take out the Subaru Brat because while, why wouldn't you in the worst snowstorm in Colorado? Dad, what a great day. Oh my, Tommy, you uh, certainly brought out the right vehicle for <laughs> us to have a little bit of fun with. Uh, why don't you tell them what we got here? Well, a little secret of mine, my, my biggest dirty secret, is I am obsessed with 1970s and 80s Subarus because they were so ahead of their time, so advanced, so weird compared to other cars on the road, and incredibly popular here in Colorado. This is the car that just about everyone drove in the 70s and the 80s in Colorado. Yeah, and of course, back in the day when I was a kid, if you wanted a four-wheel drive, there were only about a half a dozen vehicles that actually did that, right? There were trucks. Yep. There Jeeps, were Jeeps. Scouts. Scouts. AMC. AMC Eagle. I would and, love to get one of those one day. But Subarus really became popular because of their four-wheel drive capability. And they're completely different than modern-day Subarus and how they're engineered and how they function. And I've always wanted to try one in deep, thick snow. Now, we've plowed this area, Dad. You did a great job plowing it. But out here in our wicked field, we have six to seven inches of the wettest, thickest, crustiest, nastiest snow. This is the kind of pain staking snowball kind of snow that sticks to everything and makes driving through incredibly difficult. That's like a, what was that story, Dad? Um, not, not Christmas Vacation, the other one. Okay. What was that story? A Christmas story with the kid with yeah. the, you shoot your eye out? Yeah, yeah. This is what I imagine that kid got hit with every day on the way to school, this kind of snow. Yeah, except that was all fake. <laughs> well, neither here nor there. All right, let's talk about uh, the, uh, well, the Australians would call this a ute. Uh, it's got a topper because, well, it came with a topper and whoever wanted before us decided that the best thing to do to a classic uh, brat was to rhino line it. And actually the Australians would call this the Brumby. These are really popular in New Zealand. Subaru wanted to compete in a small trickup, pickup truck race in the 1970s, so they took their wagon, they chopped off the back, and then they had to deal with the chicken tax, which is a 25% tariff on all imported trucks here to the U.S. So the solution, why don't you show them, Dad? Boom! Check that out. Was to throw in seats and call it a four passenger vehicle. Yeah, jump seats in the back. That would never fly today. And you know, actually getting one with those jump seats is very rare because those are very hard to find now. Dad, for, we have the, for the first gen brats. Now, the other thing about this vehicle is it's, uh, you know, tiny. I mean, long before the Maverick was the Brat. Yeah. And the Baja, of course, came later. But look at the size of those wheels and tires. What are those, like dinner plates? 13 inch <laughs> wagon wheels on this one, BFG radial TA tires. Dad, this car weighs 1,709 pounds. It is so incredibly light, and that is part of the secret as to what made these so amazing. And the interior is completely original. Look at that. It's a Look, little, it's a little, uh, a little, it's a little tired. Moth or mouse eaten. Hard to say which it is. But really cool. Look at look at the finest fake wood on that dashboard. And we got to talk about the paint job, Dad, because someone took a very clean original car. And and you know. Uh, Absolutely Ronald McDonald this car, and it's just horrible. But it is a good running car. We put a new clutch in it, we did some work to it. It's got the original engine, the rear original four-wheel drive system. And today we're gonna to tow it when you get stuck in the snow. We're not gonna to tow it. You're, I'm gonna, you're not gonna tow it, I'm gonna tow you, you out of there. You are gonna be amazed as to what a 70 Subaru can do. So should we give it a go? Well, that's the whole point of this video, right? We wanna see what it would have been like in Colorado to go wheel in you know one of the original off-roaders yep. uh, you know long before there was the outback wilderness and the cross track and you know the uh what's the big one the um uh forester yep, the ascent it. yep look dad there ain't no cvt in this bad boy that right there four-speed manual transmission yeah and it's it's kind of uh 
interesting that Subaru hates us even though we love Subaru. We do love their cars. Yeah, yeah they do really good work. Even the new stuff I like, but something like this old Brat, 1.6 liter, water-cooled flat four, maybe 67 horsepower when it was new. Now, probably 30 at elevation. But um, what do you say, Dad? Should Ian and I hop in and give it a go? Yeah, you hop in, I'll get my camera out, I'll shoot you guys, and then I'll get ready to come tell you out. All right, do you want to turn your mic off or are you just going to leave it be? I'm going to turn my mic off. So my mic is officially, uh, officially off. All right, here we go, Ian. Hop on in. Let me walk you around this interior. There's not a lot to see and it is tiny here. I can take the camera if you want. So, first of all, Subaru's back in the day, frameless windows on all their models. That was one of the things they were known for. The blue vinyl across the door. We've got, of course, a manual crank shift there. And then I just love, I love the imitation wood everywhere across the dash of this vehicle. Really, really cool. And let's see how this puppy runs. It's got right around 150. 5,000 miles, no, 100,510. Check that out. Actually, purrs to life beautifully. All the gauges work. Yeah, we got some gas in the tank. Gonna build some temperature in this beast. Four speed manual transmission, and we'll talk about the four wheel drive system here in a second because it is one heck of a weird setup. So, these cars, back in the day, not all Subarus were four wheel drive. You could actually buy them in front wheel drive models. And driving around every day, this car operates as a front wheel drive vehicle. So right now, only the front wheels are being powered. Look how deep that snow is. We are scraping the underside and we have something like nine inches of ground clearance. So we're driving along, right? Okay, it's doing okay. Oh no, we're starting to get stuck. And that's it. That's all she wrote. And he's stuck. Um, but, these old Subarus operate a lot like a full-size truck today, or even a Jeep, but in reverse. So they're front-wheel drive every day, and then when you get stuck, you pull down on that lever, and now you engage four-wheel drive. But keep in mind, what you're doing is you're essentially locking the front and the rear drive shaft together at the same speed, so you're going to get some binding like you would in a full-size truck, which means that when it dries out, you want to put it back in front-wheel drive. But when these things are in four-wheel drive, unlike a lot of modern crossovers and even all-wheel drive trucks, this thing is locked in four-wheel drive. And let's see if we can get unstuck. We're gonna have to build some RPM. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that! We are crawling! Oh my God, he's doing it. Look at that little guy go. The little, little truck that could. The little truck that could. Look at him go. Let's see what you got. It works! It's amazing! The capability of this vehicle is unmatched because of the weight. We're also getting all fogged out. We don't have air conditioning. Oh, look at that. Look at that bad boy dig. Look at that work. That's just unreal. And one of the benefits you got to keep in mind about Subarus back in the day is you didn't have to get out and lock the hubs. You could simply get in it, stick it in four wheel drive and go. There's no hubs to lock. Here, we'll try to pick up a little bit of speed here. Oh, this thing is awesome. Just amazing in the snow. But what they say is true. And it's the lightness that makes this vehicle so special. No traction control trying to intervene here, trying to screw up our momentum. Just good old fashioned four wheel drive, high RPMs. Let's see if we can climb this hill. Oh, that is just so much fun. That is unreal. Got to find a re reverse here. Oh man, I'm so impressed. You don't need more than 60, 70 horsepower in this car to have fun out in the snow. It does it all by itself. What a riot. Freaking love this car. We've gone downhill, dad. I am impressed, Tommy. The Pinnacle was 1979. It was oh, no. all downhill from there. I see why people love these vehicles. Come on out. Let's hop on out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. It's so cool, Tommy. Yeah. You know, I, I, when we bought this thing, how much did we pay for it? Do you remember? It was like $5,000. Uh, and it just made every penny <laughs> that we invested in it today because, you know, 
Uh, that is why Subaru is such a big company today, right? Because of this and because of the pioneering quirkiness that they had. You know some of them had a light under here? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And some of the later ones even had a two-speed transfer case, so they had extra low gearing, but they had skid plates underneath. I mean, they're basic, rugged, simple four-wheel drives with a lot of ground clearance and absolutely no acceleration. They are some of the slowest cars you can buy. And, and you know, the reason we bought this was not just because it's cool, but because getting Subaru Brats that haven't melted into the ground because they were used hard and put away wet. It's right. hard. So even though this one has been, you know, kind of modified way beyond what it should have been, I think somebody at some point can take this and bring it back to its originality because while there is, you know, rhino lining on top, there isn't rust underneath for the most part. So it's very much a solid car. So Subaru, if you're looking for a brat that you want to put in your museum. This is not it. <laughs> this is not it. <laughs> well, out, it could be it. We're out here having too much fun. Yeah, how was that? It was great, Dad. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, and that little engine purrs along. It's got just enough power. It's so small, you can see the corners, and it plows through just about anything. I want, what I want to do is, when the weather gets good, I want to take a topper off because it's horrible. Yes. And then I want to sit in the back and see what it was like to ride in the back of one of these. All right. Well, folks, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Dad, thank you for letting me take our brat out. Good heater, too, by the way, although no AC, so that window fogged up pretty quickly. And uh, as always, go to altfl.com for more... Uh, Snowy Colorado Subaru Brat. What other channel has this? There's no other. There's so many this YouTube channels. This is pretty channels. unique. For the yeah, nine yeah. people watching, yeah. this is all, all for you. All for you. See you guys next time. Ciao.